The episode begins deep within the earth in a bustling mine. Miners labor away diligently, their faces hardened by years of demanding work. Amidst the clatter of machinery and echoing sounds of shovels striking rock, one miner named Joe moves towards an elevator with an air of urgency. In his hand, he clutches a mysterious fear that captures the attention of his fellow workers. But as curiosity pulls them closer, the sphere detonates in a devastating explosion, stealing the lives of all ten miners, Joe included. Several days following the horrific incident, Carl, an experienced autopsy specialist, meets his longtime friend Nate, the town's chief of police. They aim to unravel the bizarre and heartbreaking events that have recently shaken their community. During their meeting, they discuss a mine explosion that claimed the lives of nine industrious workers and the individual Nate refers to as one very bad man, who they suspect is behind the catastrophe. In the calm ambiance of their conversation, we're transported back in time to unearth the covert mysteries of the town. Back some time, an eerie string of disappearances suddenly begins. The first to vanish is Ronald, a mill worker. Following him, the woman who operates the local laundry service goes missing. In the span of a single month, six townspeople disappear without a trace. The police, alongside volunteer search parties, search the local woods, the last known location of the missing individuals. Then a shocking discovery is made. A body gruesomely mutilated and concealed in a bag, but curiously devoid of any blood at the site. The town is plunged into a state of panic and Nate springs into action. To unravel this chilling mystery, Nate assigns two locals with the task of standing guard, equipping them with communication radios. When the cover of night falls, all that remains of the two guards are their abandoned radios, adding another layer to the mystery. Suddenly, a call from a neighboring town brings more unsettling news. They've discovered a body that bears a striking resemblance to the one found in Nate's town. The body is identified as a Bell's. We are then offered a glimpse into Abel's life prior to his unfortunate end. We see him entertaining himself at a local bar. His peaceful night takes an unexpected turn when he encounters a figure from his past, Eddie, a friend he had lost touch with. However, Eddie insists he's now Joe, causing a wave of confusion. Abel continues to assert he is Eddie, to which Joe agrees, but proposes an explanation of his new identity at his home. With his comforting voice, Joe succeeds in gaining Abel's trust. He promises a renewed friendship and seizes Abel's car keys and offers him a ride. This marks the final moment Abel is seen alive. Joe, or Eddie, has a puzzling past of his own. He was a worker who vanished after going to see a meteor shower in the forest. When he returned weeks later, he was introducing himself as Joe, suggesting that perhaps a mysterious force had taken control of his body. Determined to find answers for his newfound identity, Nate pays a visit to Joe's residence. He uncovers an English passport under the name Joseph P. Allen and a worker's card with the bell's name. The most unnerving discovery is a sphere emitting a low growling sound. Nate seizes the object, places it in his car, and urgently summons his team to assemble near the mine where Joe's employed. Upon arrival, Nate commences his search for Joe. Suddenly, Joe emerges from the shadows. Spotting the police, he reacts swiftly. He shatters the car window, retrieves the sphere, and sprints into the mine. Managing to evade the pursuing officers, he boards an elevator as he passes the miners. He hurls the sphere at them. This causes a massive explosion, further complicating the already troubled town. Back to the present, Nate confesses to Carl his suspicion that Joe intentionally set off the explosion triggered by the mysterious fear he was carrying. However, Nate is confused by Joe's seemingly irrational behavior of running towards the police instead of away from them in his desperate attempt to retrieve the sphere. Intrigued and eager to uncover the truth, Nate escorts Carl to the site where the bodies lie. Pennsylvania Ice and Refrigeration Company in anticipation of an in-depth autopsy to reveal the cause of their deaths. Perceiving a somber look on Carl's face on their way, Nate asks if something's amiss. Carl reveals his grim prognosis of stomach cancer, giving him a mere six months left to live. Nate is taken aback by the news, but Carl dismisses his concern with a resigned acceptance, commenting on the unpredictable amount of time each person has. 
Upon reaching their destination, they're greeted by Deputy Davis. Despite only managing to bring the temperature down to 36 degrees, Davis reassures them it's the best they could do. Carl Ever the Professional acknowledges the conditions as sufficient for his task of autopsy. Seeing the bodies, Nate apologizes for the grim setting, but Carl dismisses his worry, stating it is more than adequate for his purpose. As they scrutinize the bodies further, Nate admits to being haunted bewildered by thoughts about the entire incident for a while now. Carl, however, advises him to put the case to rest for the night and get some sleep. Acknowledging his friend's concern, Carl assures him that he'll enlist Nate's help in the morning. Accepting his friend's advice, Nate departs to take some rest. Meanwhile, Carl embarks on the difficult process of the autopsy, meticulously examining each body. Simultaneously, he begins to record his findings, ensuring to capture every detail that might shed light on this puzzling mystery. The tape recording, intended for Nate when he returns back after his rest, bears witness to every revelation Carl uncovers in his somber pursuit of truth. Carl begins his meticulous autopsy with the body of a man named Miller, found isolated from two clusters of the deceased. The larger group was located 30 yards from Joe, the suspect, while the smaller group compromised of Jackson and Brady was found in closer proximity to Joe. Carl speculates that he'll discover bomb fragments on Miller. He carefully undresses the body, placing it under the light for thorough examination. After inspecting the external aspects of the body, Carl carefully makes an incision to examine the internal organs. He carefully weighs each organ, recording every finding meticulously. Contrary to his initial hypothesis, the first body reveals no evidence of a bomb being involved in the accident. After concluding his autopsy of Miller, Carl returns the organs to their rightful places and closes up the body. As he prepares to return the body to the cold storage, he experiences an inexplicable shiver and hears a voice reflected off the body, urging him to flee. Dismissing this as a figment of his imagination, he decides to stay put and continue his task. Next, he selects Jackson, whose body body was found adjacent to Joe. He elaborates on his theory about the mysterious sphere, suggesting that Joe's intention might not have been to use it as a bomb, but rather destroy the sphere itself. Upon examining Jackson's body, he discovers a deep circular wound on the chest, penetrating to the heart. When he opens the chest cavity, he's shocked to find that the heart and lungs have been completely drained of blood. Puzzled, he concludes his autopsy of Jackson and returns him to the freezer. His subsequent autopsy of Brady, found alongside Joe, reveals a similar chest wound. Upon opening him, he is faced with a startling sight. Brady's internal organs are devoid of blood. Carl compares his observations with a photograph taken before the bodies were recovered when he's interrupted by a brief power outage. A radical theory begins to form in his mind. He speculates that the drained blood from the victims might be in Joe's stomach, who's assumed to be possessed now. In order to verify his chilling theory, Carl decides to examine Joe's body, venturing into the freezer room. To his absolute horror, Joe's body springs to life, crawling menacingly towards Carl. The resurrected figure follows Carl into the examination room where a terrified Carl drops his scalpel. Joe, or rather the entity within, picks up the fallen scalpel and uses it to cut a cord within his mouth, removing a hindrance to speech. In a voice that is not entirely human, the entity confesses to being trapped inside Joe's flesh, starved for nourishment. It becomes apparent that Joe is merely a host body that the alien entity had possessed, taking over Eddie's body and giving it a new identity. When Carl questions the entity about its origins, it reveals itself to be a traveler, not of this earth, and that his true form is still small and hideous. The entity referring to the mysterious sphere as its spaceship explains the sphere should be destroyed by the possessed entity, Joe in this case, so that their mysteriousness can be kept. However, when Carl presses for more details about why the ship had to be destroyed, the entity refuses to elaborate. During their tense conversation, Carl subtly picks up a knife. However, the entity, sharp and observant, notices it and orders him to put it down. The entity, now even closer, tells Carl that it can smell his cancer and finds the scent tempting. Unfazed, Carl confronts the entity, stating that his body will serve as its coffin. In an attempt to attack the entity, he prepares to strike with the knife. 
but in retaliation, tentacle-like projections burst forth from the entity's mouth, knocking Carl unconscious. Upon regaining consciousness, Carl observes a gruesome sight. The entity is draining the blood of the remaining bodies using its tentacles. This reveals the cause of the mysterious wounds on Jackson and Brady. The entity shares that the blood he consumed was sour in comparison to the feast it anticipates from Carl's body. Soon, Joe takes off his clothes and starts to cut himself to let the alien inside him go to Carl. Because Joe's body is paralyzed, he doesn't feel any pain. As the entity prepares for the transfer into Carl's body, he discloses his ability to paralyze his host. Beginning his transfer, he spares only Carl's left arm unparalyzed, which remains bound to the table. He explains that this is necessary for the final neural transferring, which will allow him to integrate his brain seamlessly into Carl's. The alien entity recalls its initial entry into Joe through Eddie's mouth as he slept, a method no longer possible due to its growth from its early larval stage. The creature details the biology of its kind which possesses only essential organs such as hooks or suckers, lacking the typical sensory organs. Instead, they steal these senses from their hosts. Hearing this, Carl labels it as a parasite. However, the entity is offended and starts asserting that his species have been appropriating humans for millennia, causing the downfall of great civilizations. The entity continues his sinister plan, informing Carl that Nate soon to return will serve as his first meal within Carl's body. Despite Carl's declaration that Joe's overlooking something important, the entity remains arrogantly dismissive, confident that he will soon gain full access to Carl's thoughts. The entity then retrieves an octopus-like creature, the parasite's true form, and places it onto Carl's body. Joe then carves an incision into Carl's left side to facilitate the attachment, finally abandoning the lifeless shell of Eddie's body. Carl tries to hit the weird thing, but he can't reach it. In a brave act, Carl uses all the power he has left to cut his own neck. He uses his sharp mind to make a clever plan to fool the creature. When the creature goes into Carl's body, it wants to use all his senses to work better. But Carl's plan is to give up his senses so the creature won't find anything useful. With this plan in mind, he quickly writes a message on his chest before he does something very scary. He removes his own parts that help him sense like his ears and eyes, and then he cuts his own neck in an attempt to stop the creatures from feasting on his blood. When the alien finally invades Carl's body, it is met with a horrifying revelation. It now resides within a sensory-deprived, mutilated body that is rapidly losing blood. Carl, although fading, manages to mockingly inform the creature of its new, grim living conditions. The alien, seemingly panicked, insists that it can still manipulate Carl's body and plans to await Nate's arrival. Carl, however, informs the creature that he will bleed out within minutes, casting darkness over the alien's plan. Just as Nate arrives at the scene, Carl reveals the critical detail the alien overlooked during its brutal process. The entire ordeal was documented on tape as Carl's recording device had been left running. The chilling detailed account of the alien's cruel nature would prove invaluable evidence for Nate. As the alien realizes the gravity of its miscalculation, Carl collapses, the laughter dying on his lips. Nate hears the commotion and finds his way to the gruesome scene. As he surveys Carl's mutilated body, he spots the bloody written letters on his chest. Play tape. Burn me. Complying with the directive, Nate starts the playback of the disturbing tape recording. In this chilling conclusion to a series of mysterious events, the courage and foresight of Carl shine through in his final moments. Even in the face of death, he sacrifices his own life to protect his town and reveal the horrifying truth behind the alien invader. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.